Hey guys, I am back with the second video of the video series on nutrition in animals class 7 science. So this video is in continuation to the previous video where we will continue to talk about nutrition in animals that is in human beings we are going to continue our discussion on the digestive system. So here in this video we will talk about pharynx, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine and so on. So let's complete the incomplete story. So are you all ready to learn with me? Let's begin. So now that we have discussed mouth and buccal cavity, it's term for pharynx and esophagus, the next parts of the alimentary canal. So let's talk about pharynx. Now, what did we see till now? We saw that the food entered through the mouth, then it went into the buccal cavity where uh, it got mixed with the saliva, it was broken down into smaller pieces by teeth. Now, what happens to the food? Now, this food moves into the pharynx. So, pharynx is a common passage for food and air. So, it connects to food pipe and windpipe. So this portion, so from where do we breathe in? So we breathe through our nostrils, right? So you see, this is how we will breathe in. So the air will be moving through this part and the food will be moving through this part, correct? So this common passage for both food as well as air, that is called pharynx. So pharynx is going to connect to the food pipe as well as to the wind pipe. So the wind pipe is going to be somewhere just behind the food pipe. So that's how it is. So the, the air which we uh, breathe in that will get into the wind pipe and the food which we eat that will get into the food pipe. So for both of them there is one common entry that is pharynx and pharynx will take a decision. If it is food it will send it to the uh, food pipe. If it is air then it will send it to the wind pipe. But no digestion happens in pharynx. So pharynx is just like, uh, you can say it is like an entry gate where you, you, if you go to see a fair or if you go to see some event. So what happens at the entry? So at the entry gate, a person is standing there who checks your tickets and then allow you to go inside. So similarly here also pharynx will just pass food into the food pipe and air into the wind pipe. So that is the only purpose of pharynx. So no digestion happens here. So pharynx will connect. So it is like a common thing which is connected to nose also, which is also connected to mouth. So it is like connected to both the parts. So let's see where does the food go after passing through the pharynx. Of course, it goes into the food pipe, which is the esophagus. So this is the food pipe. So after passing through the pharynx, it moves into the food pipe. And what happens in the food pipe? So this food pipe helps in the downward movement of food. So if you see pharynx and esophagus, these are the two parts of the alimentary canal where no actual digestion happens. They just help in moving the food to the place where digestion is going to happen. So they actually help in transporting the food from mouth to stomach. So they act as the road between the two. So in esophagus, they have some muscles involved on the walls of the esophagus or the food pipe and these muscles make some movement which is called peristalsis. So peristalsis is the name of the movement which is due to expansion and contraction of the muscles on the inner walls of the food pipe. And this movement pushes the food downward and that's how the food moves in the downward direction and finally it reaches the stomach. And now here starts the main story of digestion. Expand. Stomach is like a bag which is capable of expansion. So as long as there is nothing inside it, it is like a small pouch. Now when you start putting things inside this pouch, it keeps on expanding. So it is capable of expansion but then yes again there is a limitation to its expansion. So as we keep eating food, our stomach keeps expanding to accommodate the food particles. And this expansion is possible due to the presence of muscular wall of the stomach. So the muscles actually expand and that's how it creates space for the food. Inside the stomach are present some specific enzymes which help in the process of digestion. And these enzymes are produced or secreted by the glands called gastric glands. And what are they? 
pepsin enzymes hydrochloric acid mucus these are some of the very important things which are present inside the stomach and which play a significant role in the process of digestion so basically what happens is this hydrochloric acid that is hcl which is present in the stomach this acid plays a very important role now one function that it performs is that the food which we eat that might contain some tiny germs or some impurities so they get destroyed by the action of this acid so that is one function which it performs the other function is that this hydrochloric acid actually activates the enzyme pepsin now this enzyme pepsin how it helps it helps in the digestion of proteins it helps to break down proteins into simpler forms like how you had uh, the salivary amylase inside the mouth which breaks down the complex carbohydrates into simple carbohydrates similarly here in the stomach the complex proteins are broken down into their simplest forms so that is done by this enzyme pepsin and this enzyme pepsin becomes active only in presence of hydrochloric acid otherwise this pepsin is present in the form of pepsinogen so it is actually present in the form of pepsinogen and this pepsinogen is inactive it is not active so how it becomes active it, it becomes active in acidic environment and this acidic environment is created due to the presence of hcl and in acidic environment pepsinogen gets converted into pepsin and pepsin is an active enzyme and what does pepsin do pepsin helps to convert the complex proteins which are present inside our food into simpler proteins or less complex proteins so what are those less complex proteins maybe proteases or peptones so they are less complex right so this happens in presence of this enzyme pepsin so that is the role of pepsin and hydrochloric acid now what about this mucus now the small amount of mucus which is present mucus is a slimy substance slippery like substance so mucus provides protection protection to whom now as you saw that since stomach contains so much of acid it contains a lot of hydrochloric acid so the entire environment inside the stomach is acidic which is favorable for the action of pepsin but the gastric juice is so strong that it can digest the stomach itself now under such acidic environment when you have uh, active enzymes like pepsin it is also possible that the digestion becomes so strong that the stomach itself gets digested because all our body parts they are also made up of what they are also made up of amino acids they are also made up of proteins so therefore in order to protect the stomach from being digested these mucus are present so mucus lubricates and protects the epithelium layer of the stomach so out, out this layer of the stomach is surrounded by mucus which actually helps in protecting the stomach so it also lubricates the surface of the stomach so that the food which gets digested here can further move down to the next part so so here you see that in stomach a good amount of digestion happens here so we saw that digestion of carbohydrates take place in the mouth with the help of salivary amylase digestion of proteins takes place in the stomach with the help of pepsin and hydrochloric acid now that's why have you ever heard of people complaining of acidity people say that i'm having pain in my stomach why because i ate something which was too oily or i ate something uh, outside or some junk and that's why i'm getting acidity so what is this meaning of acidity when the amount of hydrochloric acid in the stomach increases too much then comes the problem of acidity so how do you solve that problem by taking some antacid tablets so when you take the antacid tablets so the antacid tablet is like they act just opposite to acid so they try to reduce the acidic environment of the stomach and that's how they resolve the problem so that's about what happens in the stomach so in stomach digestion happens with the help of gastric enzymes so all these enzymes which are released from the gastric glands they are called gastric enzymes here when when we talk about stomach now here it is important to talk about some of the very important digestive glands 
So one such digestive gland is liver. In fact, liver is the largest gland in the human body. What is a gland? Gland is any such organ which secretes hormones, enzymes and these secretions play a very important role in our body. So liver secretes bile juice which is stored in the gallbladder. Where is liver? So this is liver. The red colored structure which you see that is liver and this liver is going to secrete bile juice and the bile juice is stored in the gallbladder. So here the green colored structure which you see here that is gallbladder. Now what is the function of bile juice? This juice helps in digestion of fats. So carbohydrate is done, proteins was also done in the stomach. So we are left out with fats. So the digestion of fats happen with the help of bile juice and this bile juice is secreted by liver and it is stored in the gallbladder. So this juice makes the medium alkaline. So alkaline is just the opposite of acid. So you have something called acid, you have something called base. Base is nothing but alkaline. So it is basic in nature, bile juice. So what does it do? In the basic environment, it activates the action of pancreatic and intestinal enzymes. That is, these small intestine also releases certain enzymes. So these intestinal enzymes need a basic environment. They do not want acidic environment for their function. Similarly, the enzymes which are released by the pancreas. Pancreas is the, is the other gland we are going to talk about. So just behind the stomach, you can see a green colored leaf like structure. So this green colored structure is nothing but the pancreas. So pancreas also secretes some pancreatic enzymes. So all these enzymes help in digestion of food. Pancreatic enzymes, intestinal enzymes, bile juice from liver. So basically bile juice will help to digest the fats and uh, convert them into less complex forms. And what about the pancreas? It is the second largest gland. It secretes pancreatic juice. So the enzymes which are secreted from the pancreas, that is the pancreatic enzymes, it, it contains all types of enzymes which can digest both carbohydrates, proteins as well as fats. So it has trypsin which helps in digestion of proteins, pancreatic amylase which helps in digestion of starch and pancreatic lipase which helps in digestion of fats. So if you see, now you might ask that just now you told that in the mouth itself, the carbohydrates gets digested by salivary amylase. Now what I said was, of course the digestion of carbohydrates happen there, but the digestion doesn't get completed. It is not that the carbohydrates get completely digested. Still some portion of it remain undigested. So they are again acted upon by pancreatic amylase. Right? So whichever is left over undigested carbohydrate, proteins or fats, they are all acted upon by these pancreatic enzymes. So all these pancreatic enzymes and also the enzymes from the intestines, they need an alkaline environment and that alkaline environment is provided by the bile juice. So now you, if you see here, the liver is connected to the gallbladder, liver secretes bile juice which is stored in this gallbladder. So if you see here, here you have a tube like structure which is connected to the stomach. So basically this secretion of the bile juice, it reaches this place. Correct? Similarly, if you look at the pancreas, the green colored structure behind, that is also connected to the stomach and the intestine here. So that portion where the food enters from stomach to intestine, so at that region, both the pancreatic enzymes as well as the bile juice, they also join that area. So basically, the food particles are uh, exposed to the pancreatic enzymes and the bile juice. So that's how the environment becomes alkaline, pancreatic enzymes become active. So again digestion happens due to the action of pancreatic enzymes. And then finally the food enters into the small intestine. So small intestine is this orange colored structure which is extremely coiled. So that is small intestine. So this small intestine again is going to secrete a lot of intestinal enzymes. So food reaches from stomach to intestine through the sphincter muscle. So this, this muscle is like a muscle which allows food to enter from stomach to intestine but it doesn't allow the backward movement. It doesn't allow food to enter from intestine to stomach. It doesn't allow that. 
So in this small intestine, if you see, it is extremely coiled tube and it has three parts. That is duodenum, jejunum and ileum. These are the three parts. So duodenum is the first part which is immediately connected after the stomach. So it has a common bile and pancreatic ducts opens here and it is U-shaped. So here you see, this is the shape. This is the first one from here. This part basically is the duodenum. So if you see in the duodenum, the pancreatic duct is opening and as well as the bile duct is also opening. So this is the bile duct and this one is the pancreatic duct. Both of them open here. The next part is jejunum. So this part is jejunum. And finally, the last part is ileum. So as you see, the width also keeps decreasing. Duodenum is more wide, jejunum is narrower and ileum is even more narrow. And small intestine is a place where digestion happens because a lot of intestinal enzymes are released. Here also the pancreatic enzymes along with the bile juice help in digestion because this digestion of due to pancreatic enzymes and bile juice also happens in the duodenum area, this area, right? And besides that, the intestinal glands also secrete enzymes to digest carbohydrates, proteins and fats. So, if I try to sum up the entire process of digestion, it started from mouth where salivary amylase digested the carbohydrates. Then it reached the stomach where digestion happened and there the pepsin digested the proteins. Then it reached the duodenum that is the first part of the small intestine. There the bile juice created the environment and also it started digesting fats. And at the same time, the pancreatic enzymes and the intestinal enzymes, they also started digesting the leftover carbohydrates as well as the proteins. So basically in small intestine, complete digestion happens. Whatever a food material has to be digested, they get digested in the small intestine. Beyond small intestine, no further digestion happens. So the start of digestion is at the is at the buccal cavity and the end of digestion happens at the small intestine after this what happens now digestion is over so ingestion is over digestion is over the next step is absorption so absorption also happens at the small intestine now in small intestine there are some special hair like structures called villi which are present on the inner walls of the small intestine and these hair like structure they actually when you have a lot of hair like structure on a surface so that helps in absorption now let us suppose in one case you have a surface like this and it has to absorb something in another case you have a surface like this on which you have thin hair like structures so each of so the overall surface area increases in this case therefore the net absorption increases in this case so the same thing holds true for small intestine also due to the presence of a large number of hair like structures the overall absorption increases and that's how small intestine helps to absorb the food here now the villi on one end it will absorb the digested food and on the other end they are connected to the blood vessels right so that's how they will pass on the absorbed food to the blood vessels because finally the blood vessels need to carry the uh, absorbed food to different parts of the body so villi acts as a connecting link between the absorbed food so this this is basically the digested food so the digested food is absorbed by the villi and on the other end it is connected to blood vessels. So the absorbed food is then sent to the blood vessels. So that's how villi plays a very important role. Now you understand how important small intestine is. In small intestine first of all complete digestion of food takes place. Absorption of food also takes place in small intestine. So we are done with ingestion, digestion and absorption. Now the length of the small intestine varies from animal to animal depending upon their food habits because now for an, some animals eat more plants or more grasses. Now grasses contain more cellulose. So cellulose again take more time to get digested. 
correct so for such animals they have a very long small intestine but when compared to that those animals which eat flesh now flesh do not contain cellulose so flesh is easier to be digested so in those animals the length of the small intestine is small because small intestine is performing uh, one of the the most crucial role in the process entire process of digestion next comes the large intestine what does the large intestine do this green colored structure which you see here that is large intestine so here happens the ejection part ejection that is the undigested food needs to be sent out of the body so ejection happens here so all the food that remains undigested that is passed on to the large intestine so this large intestine, if you look at its width, it is wider than the small intestine. Small intestine was quite uh, narrow compared to that large intestine is wider. This is also divided into two parts. One is colon and the other is rectum. So colon is the inverted U-shaped structure. So this part is colon. So starting from here till here, this, U inter uh, this inverted U-shaped structure, this structure is colon. And what is rectum? Rectum is this terminal part. So this part is rectum. So rectum is that part where all the excess water, now whatever is undigested food that comes into the large intestine, now as it passes through the large intestine, all the water from that food is absorbed because water is essential for our body. Our body should always have enough water because lack of water can cause dehydration. Correct? So all the excess water from the undigested food is absorbed in these portion and finally the undigested food is secreted or excreted out through the anus in the form of feces. So that is why the feces which is given out of the anus that is solidified because all the water has already been uh, absorbed by the large intestine. So this is how the entire process of holozoic nutrition takes place in case of human beings. Now let us have a quick review on whatever we have discussed about the entire process of nutrition in humans. Now it was a complex process I agree but I hope that you have been able to catch it up. So let's have a quick review. Now it starts the process starts with our mouth and through mouth happens ingestion or intake of food. Now once the food enters inside the mouth, then it gets into the oral cavity or the buccal cavity. And in this buccal cavity, we have saliva and saliva secretes an enzyme called salivary amylase. And this salivary amylase helps in digestion of carbohydrates. After that, here comes the pharynx. And this pharynx is a common pathway. So it sends the food into the food pipe, which is the esophagus. So this is the food pipe. Now food pipe sends the food down to the stomach. Now once the food reaches the stomach, in stomach is present hydrochloric acid, which makes the environment inside the stomach acidic. In this acidic environment, the enzyme pepsin becomes active and pepsin helps in digestion of proteins. So it breaks down complex proteins into less complex peptones or proteases. Right? Now from stomach, these partially digested food then enters into the small intestine. First part of the small intestine which is duodenum. Now, in this duodenum, there are two ducts. One is coming from the pancreas and this is the pancreas, the hidden green colored structure. And through the pancreatic duct, pancreatic enzymes are released into the duodenum. Similarly, here you have liver and liver secretes bile juice. Liver is going to secrete bile juice which is stored in the gallbladder. So this is gallbladder. Now through this bile duct, the bile juice will also be secreted into the duodenum. So the bile juice will cremate the environment inside the duodenum alkaline and this alkaline environment will activate the pancreatic enzymes and the intestinal enzymes that is the small intestine enzymes. And these enzymes will further help in digestion of carbohydrates, proteins as well as fats. So complete digestion takes place in the small intestine. Also, there are hair-like structures called villi which are present in the small intestine and they help in the absorption of the digested food. And then the absorbed food is passed on to the blood vessels where assimilation of food takes place. 
Finally, the undigested food is passed on to the large intestine. So this is the large intestine, all these parts. And here all the excess water is being absorbed and finally the undigested food material is thrown out of the body through the anus in the form of feces. So that's how the entire process of nutrition works. So my dear students, how was this video? How was your experience learning from this video? If you want to share your experience with us, do not forget to put a comment in the comment section because we eagerly wait to read your comments. Not just that, if you really like the video, do not forget to share it with your friends so that your friends can also enjoy learning. So be with us. We will meet very soon with another video with a new topic. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.